people, but when they hit you, you have to hit them back. And then people would say, oh, gee, Trump isn't a nice guy because I hit back hard. Thank you. That's exactly what I'm talking about. What's going on, everybody? Appreciate you guys all being here. Make sure you guys follow me on all the platforms you see listed up here. Make sure that if you see something in this video that you like, let me know about it. If you feel that there's something that I can add to this channel, make sure you leave it in the comment section. Make sure y'all follow me on my other YouTube channel called Man, Husband, Father, and my other YouTube channel that's kind of in the works right now. It's called Meme Stream Media Shorts. I just post shorts over there. No agendas, nothing behind it, just shorts for your enjoyment. Ladies and gentlemen, we got to get ready to talk about this because I love this interview that Donald Trump had with Newsmax Greg Kelly. Shout out to Greg Kelly. This man gave me an awesome interview some time ago. Questions, hit it off really good. They had no agenda. They didn't have no pre-questions they were going to ask me. They didn't have no system set up to where how they wanted me to respond. He asked me a question. I answered it. Shout out to Newsmax Greg Kelly. All right, y'all. This interview right here is really, really something that I feel that a lot of people just need to hear when it comes from President Trump. And one of the things in here that he's going to say is what y'all saw at the beginning, and I'm going to expound upon that after y'all watch this. But before I show y'all this, please hit that like button right now. All right, hit it right now. Appreciate it. Check this out. Hunter Biden is saying he's not going to go to the hearing he's been invited to. And look, you give him a hard time, and he deserves a hard time, but I am. Imagine you ran into Hunter Biden, say, here in Palm Beach, for some reason, some crazy coincidence, and you weren't talking politics. I know that you know about addiction from your brother Fred. Right, You've spoken right, about right. that. Just, is there anything you would tell Hunter, because his dad apparently, the president, is worried about him relapsing? Any kind of advice or encouragement that somebody like you could give to Hunter Biden? Well, I think what's happened is, you know, they went after the president of the United States. And I guess Republicans went after them. And I think it's a very bad, you know, the whole thing is very bad. There's never been anything like what's happening right now. Uh, they go after a political opponent. Uh, when I say they, I'm talking about Biden. He's going after his political opponent. I think that's made, and without even knowing it maybe, I think it's made Republicans very angry. Uh, the Hunter Biden stuff is bad, let's face it. and. If you believe the laptop from hell, there's a lot of money that's been exchanged, and uh, it's a lot of money and seems like a lot of proof. They're going to find out, and they certainly have found out, because, look, a lot of money is, has been exchanged and from a lot of different countries, including China, and that's serious stuff. But I, I would just say to him, what do you say? What do you say? So many bad things have seemed to be happening. Uh, now, they, they blame the fact that he's got drug use. And one, and one say, they say, oh, he's done a wonderful job, and he was the smartest person I've ever met. This is the father saying it. And then in the other case, every time there's something wrong, he says, well, he's got a big problem with drugs or whatever the problem is. Uh, you got to just fight it out, I guess. I, there's nothing much you can say. You know, he's being accused of some very bad things, but hopefully it all goes away. We have to get back to building our country again. We have to get back to our country's a laughing stock all over the world. Our country has never been in a position. Now, uh, Putin, as you know, is talking about nuclear weapons. He wants nuclear weapons. And we have a man that can't talk, he can't negotiate, he doesn't know he's alive. He gets up and makes a speech the other day, he's screaming at everybody like a lunatic. And everybody said, oh, he made it. You know, he made it. He made it through, barely. He made it through the speech, and he was all jacked up. And you just wonder what's going on. This is a very dangerous time for our country. Two more quick things. Um, I want to respect your time. In 2016, you did the opposite of what the political professionals would recommend, almost every turn, and you won. And that's amazing. That's a testament to you. But is there such a thing as overconfidence? I mean, you've been right a lot, but nobody's right all the time. Is there such a thing as overconfidence? Are you, at this point, tough to advise? Or, I know you got great advisors, but have you, did you learn some negative lessons by being right when they were wrong? And you might think, well, I'm always right. They must always be wrong. Well, they do have a hat on, and I don't produce it. Somebody asked, Trump was right about everything. I mean, if you look at all of these many, many things, I've been right about everything. I've been right about immigration. I've but the little right. things, tactics yeah. and things like that. But, uh, look, 
Uh, I listen to a lot of very smart people. I listen to people that aren't so smart. You find out they're not smart later on. Look, I've had people that are great working for me, but I've also had people where it was a mistake having them. Uh, one of the things, and I, I say this uh, very, very strongly, I feel, believe it very strongly, I came to Washington. I wasn't, like, in the Washington establishment. It's an establishment. I was a New York person, and I didn't come here much. I was here, they say, the press says 17 times. I didn't know people like uh, normally you would. And I put great people in, but I also put people that I made a mistake with. I, I made a mistake with some people I put in. Uh, obviously, it wasn't a grave mistake because we had no wars. I got out of wars. I rebuilt the military. We defeated ISIS. You know, all the different things we did, lowest taxes ever. We got the biggest tax cuts ever or the biggest regulation cuts ever. But nevertheless, uh, I now know people. I now know, I believe, Washington probably at the upper levels better than anybody. And I think I'm going to have some unbelievable people. And I have unbelievable people that want to be with us. I have, you know, as per the f first part of the interview, tremendous people, some of the most talented people, they want to come into this administration. So we'll see what happens. We're wrapping up, but uh, the general election is underway right now. Yeah. Yeah. The other night I saw you, in, I guess it was Saturday night, you said, I reached my hand out to Democrats right now if you want to join us. And that was beautiful. But it was in the middle of a, of a rally yeah. that the other side's not seeing, networks aren't carrying it. To reach out to them, to the people who've been lied to about you, yeah. how are you going to do that? And are you going to show another side to yourself or change anything? So during my tenure, we had the most successful economy in history. And it's very interesting. I was called, all of a sudden, blacks, Hispanics, Asians, women, men, with diploma, without diploma. Everybody was doing great. And I was seeing real success. And I was being called by some very liberal or progressive, you want, want to use the term, they don't like liberal anymore, but I'll call them whatever, whatever it is, from some very liberal people. Some people that you would never think would call, Greg, and they wanted to get together. The country was coming together, and success is going to bring the country together, and it should come together. But you have some very bad people politically on the other side. Some people, I really think, I actually think they hate the country. They hate the country. There are some people who can't get past, I know this has been a thing for a long time, the tone. People delight in the tone. I like the straight talk, but some people forget the success. They're mm -hmm. just horrified by... Oh, he said a bad word, or he said this about you, used a nickname. Is there any <laughs> way to get them, to get those people? I think so. I do. I do believe it's uh, when we prove that we were right. We were right about things, and when we prove that we were right. Remember this. I came in, and before I ever started, I was under investigation. I don't mean this. I'm talking about before I even announced I was running for president. I was under investigation by these lunatics. And they were investigating me because they thought I might be running for office. I fired Comey very early. It was a good move. I, if I didn't, I might not be talking. And you got not investigated about. for it. Yeah, oh, I got investigated for it. By the way, I made the right move. That was a great move. That's getting rid of the deep state. But I got rid of him, got rid of a lot of other people. And we were doing, we were doing really well. But uh, these people, if, if I were really nice about things and soft and let's talk about not using certain tone or certain words. Or, probably I wouldn't be here. I wouldn't have survived. I had to be tough. And then people say he's tough. But they put me under the gun from long before I got invest but before I got elected. I was under a gun like nobody and probably no other president in history. Going back at them. You're going back at the deep state. You could lose the middle at the same time. Like, you're fighting for your life. You're fighting for the country. But they're alienated along the way. I, you're not anticipating any kind of shift in style, in approach, in a, I don't know, like Rocky Balboa was fighting Apollo yeah, Creed. He, yeah. switched, he switched from right hand to left yeah, hand, something yeah, no, just understand. to change the game. Uh, I would like to say yes. I will always be nice. I will always be respectful. Uh, no, I have to do it. I have to do it strong. These are many of these people, deranged Jack Smith. He's a deranged individual. He was told to do a number of me because they think that's the way Biden gets elected. This has never happened in this country before. If I was going to fight it in a nice way, I don't think I'd be successful. Mr. President, thank you. Thank you very much. So y'all get my drift on that. You see what I take away from that? To those of you that have followed me on this channel, 
How often have I said to you guys, I don't care who you are. We can have disagreements all day long. And I say things like this. If somebody pushes me and I completely destroy their face, that's your fault. You never should have touched me. If you, if I'm at a speaking engagement, this never happened. God forbid it does. If you, we're at a speaking engagement. You don't like what I'm saying. We're talking. You take a cup of water and splash me in my face with it. If I punch you in your face and make your eyeball pop out, that's your fault. You can't hit me and then get pissed off because I do something worse than you. You can't do that. You can't hit me and get pissed off because I do something worse to you than what you did to me. I only pushed you. Why'd you have to sit there and body slam me and pound my face? You never should have touched me. I'm saying that from a verbal level. I'm saying it from a intellectual level. Don't get pissed off that if you try to throw shots at me and I come back and throw shots at you harder than what you did at me and you, I thought you're supposed to be a Christian. I thought you're supposed to be a nothing. You never should have did it. You the one that crossed that boundary and you thought that I was just going to take it. That's the issue that I have with a lot of Republicans. That's why a lot of people resonate with Trump. Now, again, let me make this clear, folks. I am not a Republican. I am not a Democrat. I am just simply Ty. That's it. T-Y, not Todd. I am Ty. OK, <laughs> inside joke for some of y'all that don't know my channel that well, but that's what we need, ladies and gentlemen. All I keep on doing is keep reiterating that what I am to my sons. What do y'all think? <laughs> OK. What type of person would you want, ladies? What type of man would you want leading you? Soft, sensitive, feeble, weak frail or would you want a man that's going to be a strong protective although he can be nurturing he will say things that you may not like the way he said but you know he's mean well he has your heart at best interest but he's not somebody that you can run he's going to you know that when you get behind this man that you with this man is going to go down you don't even have to question that when stuff hits the fan if that man is going to step up you don't have to question that if things kind of get bad financially that, that man going to step up you see what i'm saying and all I'm saying is, which one of those people resonate with you? Now, y'all think I'm talking about, I'm talking just in general with men, period. Because this, y'all, they're trying to emasculate men on a level. I'm not about to get into that, but my point is, what type of a leader would you want standing up and leading you? One that's feeble, frail, weak, scared, sensitive, cry easily, about feelings, or one that's going to be, you know, y'all, y'all know what I'm getting at. You know what I'm getting at. I want somebody that's going to be strong. I can y'all, if you, if you know me, some of y'all that know me personally, y'all know I cannot stand weak, jellyback, 65, sensitive men. I can't. I really can't. And I know that all of us are different based off of temperament in particular cases. But overall, if you're going to be a man and you're going to be possibly one day a husband and a father, my mentees, y'all already know how I am about this. Y'all know how I feel about this. You know it. There's nothing wrong with being a man. There's nothing wrong with being a leader. If you are a leader, you need to be a strong leader. One of the ways, and I'm not saying this about me to brag or anything like that, but I'm just telling you one of the ways that we found out that this is something that is absolutely 100% part of my DNA and what I'm made of. I have a teacher in the first, fourth grade. Name is Chalice Perkins. Shout out to you, Miss Chalice Perkins. This lady told me exactly what I was going to be one day. I didn't even know what the words even meant. We didn't even know they even did this experiment. They put us all in the classroom and presented us with a problem. And every time the problem came up, I was the first one to jump at it and try to solve it. It didn't even, y'all, I don't care what it was. It was a puzzle they threw out there. I was the first one to jump out there and try to do it. And when I jumped out and do it, other people tried to, we didn't even know they was even doing an experiment on us. We had, I forget his name. I want to say, Oh, I forget his name, y'all. But anyway, it was a psychiatrist that came through and just wanted to do some observation. He was going to school for psychiatry at Millican University. And he came and did this experiment to us for like maybe, I think it lasts for maybe, he came like th two or three times a week and it lasts for about a month. All he would do is do something in the classroom. And every single time something happened, I stepped up. Even if I, even if I didn't know if I was going to be able to do it or not. And my point is, I was willing to take on the challenge with no fear. So after he got done, he concluded that he pretty much gave her a report and she came up and she just said, Ty, whatever you're going to do in life, I don't know. I hope you make good decisions. But you, son, you are a leader. 
and you are very athletic, you're very energetic, and you you stay you you stay doing sports. I'm going to read about you in the newspaper one day, son. You're going to do great things. You are a leader. You're not scared. You're fearless. That's literally what my teacher, Miss Perkins, said to me, Chalice Perkins. And all I'm saying that for is these things can be seen in us early. Where did that confidence come from? Now, y'all might think this is crazy. A lot of my confidence came from the people I grew up with in the streets. Shout out to my older cousins. Yeah, y'all can call them what you want to. You do get good things from folks that are around in bad environments. Yeah, I grew up with cousins that were thugs, murders, <laughs> robbers, the whole nine. But that boldness to be able to step forward with no fear, I got that from the street. So that thing did help me. You can't pull good things from your environment, right? So my point in saying that is, according to this video, it will be no question that if something starts to hit the fan, that Donald Trump is going to step up and take it on, head on. Y'all don't believe me? Go look at old videos when he was telling Schumer certain things. I mean, go back and look how he even shook Putin's hand, shook him and pulled him towards him. You know what I'm saying? That kind of made, even though that was an optic, it kind of made you feel like, yeah, we got this. Anyway, y'all, I know I ratted on about that, but I felt that that was for somebody. How do y'all think in nature the females usually choose the males? Them males will show up like, look at, man, y'all, look, just look at nature. Most males compete over women. They fight, battle it out. One of them going to be strong and the female end up choosing the one that actually is a strong one. You know, but here, why y'all think they're trying to emasculate us? They want us to be these soft, sissified things. We are men. We are the leaders of our family. We are supposed to be the leaders of pretty much practically a lot of things when it comes to protecting ours. We can't have no weak, jelly back, scared. Oh, I don't know. My feelings. Guys, we're in. No, 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 no. Strong men. Anyway, y'all, let me know what y'all think it is, man. Before we get out of here. Hit that like button for me real quick and do me a favor, please, 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 please. Share this video with someone through your social medias. And if you don't have social media like a lot of you don't, a lot of you do have a cell phone. Go into your cell phone, encourage somebody to come and check this channel out, encourage them to subscribe to the channel. And when they do, if they watch this video, particularly today, tell them, hey, I just subscribed to your channel. My friend come, my friend told me to come and check you out. I would really appreciate it if you did that, all right? Let's hear it, folks. Let me know what y'all think of this. I'm Ty Smith, Model Renaissance Man, hoping and praying that every last one of you have food, shelter, and clothing. And most of all, I pray every last one of you guys are in great health mentally, physically, emotionally, and spiritually. God bless you all through Jesus.